Oh my God, you guys, this is very exciting. On the last day of January, we're going to experience a super blue blood moon. I don't know what that means, but it sounds pretty scary. I assume it has something to do with the CBS cop drama Blue Bloods, maybe some sort of viral marketing stunt where at some point in the evening we'll all look to the sky and see a giant Tom Selleck mustache slowly descend over the full moon. Man, that would be amazing. Okay, no, that's probably not going to happen. Um, in fact, it's just going to be a lunar eclipse. But stay with me because that's pretty exciting too, and I wanted to talk to you about it. Uh, a lunar eclipse is sometimes known as a blood moon due to the orangey red coloring that it can sometimes take on. Uh, a lunar eclipse happens when the Earth, Moon, and Sun are all in a single plane with the Earth in between, obviously, casting its shadow over the moon. In fact, that's one of the many ways that ancient astronomers knew that the Earth is a sphere. They could see the round shadow of the Earth as it moved across the moon. Pretty cool. But a shadow isn't always black. Uh, lunar eclipse colors can vary from very dark to bright red uh, over the course of the eclipse uh, due to the light from the sun filtering through the Earth's atmosphere. It's the same reason why sunrises and sunsets look red to us. Uh, and in fact, a nice poetic way to think about the lunar eclipse is that the moon turns red uh, due to the reflection of all the sunsets and sunrises happening simultaneously on Earth. I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, so that explains the blood part of super blue blood moon. But if the moon is going to turn black or red, where does the blue come in? Well, that's because it's also a blue moon, which is uh, not a scientific term. It's the second full moon in a month. Uh, I want to know that that is not the original definition, but it is the current accepted definition. And it happens once every 2.7 years or so. Uh, prior to that definition, a blue moon was determined to be the extra moon in a year that had 13 phases instead of 12. Uh, the exact moon that was called a blue moon in those 13 was the third of four moons that happened in a single season, since a single season would normally only have three moons. Why would the blue moon be the third of four and not the fourth? Because humans are bizarre creatures who make no sense. Sorry, that's all I've got. Uh, so we've covered blue and blood. What about super? Well, that's another unscientific term that's caught on amongst the general population, and it is used to refer to a moon that is about as close to Earth as it can get. Uh, the distance from the Earth to the moon varies over the course of the cycle, um, and in every lunar cycle, the moon reaches uh, apogee, in which it's furthest away from the Earth, and uh, perigee, in which it's closest to Earth. When the perigee is really close, there's no exact distance in the definition. Again, this is unscientific. We call it a supermoon because, again, humans are weird little creatures. And we get excited because the moon looks ever so slightly bigger than it normally does. So there you have it, a super blue blood moon. Uh, not as exciting once you break it all down, but remember that eclipses are cool no matter what. And this will be a great time to introduce friends, family members, and especially kids to the wonders of the universe. Uh, Space.com, there, uh, there'll be a link down below. They set up a really nice resource with lessons that you can teach pretty much any age. So get out there and learn something while enjoying a really cool spectacle. Uh, the best views will be on the west coast of the U.S., uh, where it'll start around 4.30 a.m. on January 31st. Everybody else, you can tune into a NASA live stream. Again, links are below. Enjoy.